Okay, yeah. we're on the record. One moment, please. Here, buddy. And we're ready. All right. Good evening, and welcome to the regular meeting of Hamilton City Council uh, for March 23rd, 2022. We're here in City Council Chambers at 345 High Street in Hamilton. Uh, we do have two public hearings this evening. Uh, one involves the uh, HUD uh, consolidated plan, an annual update, and the second public hearing has to do with rezoning of uh, some addresses on Pleasant Avenue. Roll call, please. Moeller. Present. Pullman. Present. Fear. Present. Vaughn. Present. Ryan. Here. Nab. Present. Lauer. Here. Okay. We're going to start off from offering a prayer by Council Member Timothy Nab, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand if you are able. Good evening, everyone. If you will, please share with me a moment of silence for the ongoing concerns and the embattlement in the Ukraine. Thank you. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do have uh, some really cool special presentations tonight. Um, first is... They're going to make an entrance in from the hallway. That is really a cool idea. Could be a first. Entrance from the Hamilton, entering from the hallway now is the Hamilton High School Bowling State Championship team. A better round of applause for them right now. I guess I need this. Okay. All right. We have proclamations for everybody. And uh, I'm going to kind of go a little bit different. I'm going to start off with the coach to say the first few words before I read the proclamation, if that's okay. Coach? Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, this is a big honor for the city of Hamilton and for this bowling team. Um, these girls have battled all year long, and it's really, it's really been special last few weeks of the season have been really special with us. Well, I know have been talking to town. Everybody's real proud of what you experienced and, and did, and you, you beat this team from what, Plain City, something, something, something? Yeah, Plain City, Jonathan Alder. Uh, we beat them uh, three, best three out of five. Uh, bowled one of the best, uh, last, the last game was one of the best Baker games we bowled all year. And I think you had to win like at the last second to get into the next round in a couple times. Yeah. Right? Um, during districts, we uh, qualified fifth, and we was the last spot, last team in. So that was pretty, pretty amazing uh, for us. First time Hamilton's ever made it to state. Well, 
let's hope this becomes a real dynasty. That would be great. Wouldn't that it? would be great. Okay. All right. And I'm standing in front of him. We're going to fix that. Okay, park. So I can stand here in the middle. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Now, I guess I'm supposed to use this. Let me read the proclamation that is to your entire team. And of course, it's going to be at the very bottom. So give me a second here, if you would. Okay, where is the one for everybody? Somebody's got one with all the team members on it. But no, this is it right here. I got it. Office of the Mayor Proclamation, whereas Hamilton City Council and City Administration would like to give recognition and congratulate the Hamilton High School girls bowling team for their tremendous season. And whereas the last state championship win by Hamilton High School was the boys division one basketball team in 2004. And whereas Hamilton High School and the community are celebrating the girls bowling team and their victory, bringing home the division one state championship. And whereas this very talented team with three first all conference team picks and two second all conference team picks completed, competed in one of the hardest conferences in the area, if not the entire state. Whereas it was not all wins throughout the season though, there were times when the team had to win out for the last qualifying spots in the sectional and district tournaments to continue with their season. Whereas when it came to the state tournament, the number two seed Hamilton High School team made their way to the state final against Plain City Jonathan Adler and were able to celebrate with a commanding lead of 54 pins near the end of the state final. Whereas team members, and please raise your hand, okay, when I mention your names, uh, Lily Arvin, okay, Emily Bruder, Gabby Bryan, Shelby Deaton, Kara Getz, Madison Harnish, Madeline Clapper, and Allison Porter. Is that all of you? Okay. Have proven to be excellent athletes and competitors, and they join other youth in making Hamilton a city of champions. Now, therefore, I, Pat Muller, Mayor of the City of Hamilton, Ohio, members of Hamilton City Council, hereby recognize the 2021 and 2022 Hamilton High School girls bowling team for winning the Ohio Division I state championship. And we wish them the best in their future endeavors. Roll on. Okay, now, each one of you has a proclamation. I'm just going to kind of pass this over here. So, Council Member, would you please go ahead and uh, read the name and give their proclamation without reading the whole proclamation, but just their name and then give them their proclamation. Shelby Deaton for winning the Ohio State uh, Division I championship. Congratulations. Thank you. Emily Bruner, congratulations. And Gabby Bryan. Here you go, Gabby, congratulations. Susan. Thank you. Lily Arvin. There you are. Congratulations. Madison Harnish. And Carrie Getz, congratulations. <laughs> Just funny things on my hand. Who's, who gets this next, Patrick? Oh, I oh, forgot. Yeah, you made your turn too. <laughs> well, Madeline was worried about where her proclamation was. Madeline Clapper, congratulations. Allison Porter. There you go. Congratulations, Allison. Okay. All right. Coaches have some fun too. Nick Arvin. Thank you. You said you were on cloud 10, right? Because you were holding that trophy. That, that, is, that is great. Tim Arthur. Jessica Spicer. Okay, we, we could be missing two right now. Okay, you'll get them. Okay, all right. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you the one that we gave all the, the names are on that one, so you'll get yours, and I apologize. Uh, now, uh, any of you young ladies want to say anything? Now's your time. Okay. 
Oh, there you go. No, no. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. All right. Any of the assistant coaches want to say anything? All right. Well, thank you for volunteering, coaches. Uh, uh, how about a round of applause for the coaches for their volunteering? <laughs> A, uh, you know, Councilmember Lauer, public, everybody knows Councilmember Lauer. I mean, he, uh, you want to challenge this team to something? I, I think we're ready. Oh. All right, let's go. I think all of city council, including our city manager, Joshua Smith, want to take a challenge to you guys to go down to Pullman Lanes and have a shootout. Are you guys up for the challenge? I'm not sure you are. Mayor Moeller, He's really a, a secret. He's a secret weapon. Dodgeball champion. <laughs> Are you guys ready for that? Come on. All right. We're going to try and get this going on. We'll call Missy Harvey, athletic director, tomorrow, and we will get this started. So. All right. So it's going to happen. It's going to be fun. Uh, are we allowed to draft a team, uh, Council Member Lauer? Maybe want to maybe want to draft Chris Cannell out there to be on our team. He's tall. If that means anything, I don't know. He's tall. So, so we're going to get this done, and it's going to be fun. Maybe maybe uh, raise some money for charity or something like that. Maybe for your program. That sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? Maybe raise some money for your program. But uh, so it's going to happen, and we're going to work on some details. And now, do anybody want to say anything else? Like, you know, you, any, any trash talk or anything? You, you want to trash talk a little bit? Okay. Um, I'm sorry to say that you guys are going down hard. Okay. All righty. All right. This is going to be a lot of fun now. Okay. But so we're going to have fun. We're going to go to Pullman's, and everything's going to be really a nice event, and it's going to be a celebration. All right? Woo! Round of applause for these folks again. <laughs> Coaches, we'll, we'll get you your, your proclamation. I do apologize. Uh, so we're good. I got to touch this trophy again. That's, that's for real, man. That's pretty cool. You don't want to play for that, do you? If we win, we get that. Uh, well, no. I have to, well, thank you again, and uh, make, make this a very special meeting. Thank you. Son, he's a very good bowler with the Special Olympics. They don't have a bad can game. She, can he give us a lesson before we start this? <laughs> I have my own ball and shoes. I'm ready. Whoa. See you Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. We got to ring. Bring it on. <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's each get at least 100 against them, okay? I don't mean total. I mean each Collective one of us. Title. Well, you know, I'm the bowling coach for Special Olympics, and the thing about it is I can't bowl worth a darn, so I'm, and I'm down the bowling lanes quite a bit. Thanks for the so, warning. All right. Yeah, thank you. Yes. It's going to be fun. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Lauer, for the idea of doing that. Uh, it's going to be special down at Bowling Lanes. There you go. All right. Our next um, special presentation is a Street Spark Mural Design Selection presentation. Janika Smith. <clears throat> Hello. Good evening. Good evening. How do I follow that? Um, yeah. That was great. <laughs> Can you bowl, Jen? Will you be on our team? Ah, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> well, probably my husband for that. I, I wouldn't do much good. <laughs> um, well, I'm here to show you the uh, public art designs that the Street Spark uh, Selection Committee uh, chose uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And I wanted to kind of show you if it's going to. Doesn't want to turn. Do I have to turn it on? Okay. Okay. 
Um, just to remind you, our program goals, um, we are trying to showcase the creativity and vision of artists through high quality mural designs, present a diversity of artistic styles and perspectives, increase the visibility of the arts in Hamilton, give jobs to local working artists, and attract more residents, visitors, and businesses to the Hamilton area. And you can see below that um, the scoring criteria that our selection committee uses to go through each of those designs. They go through a round of online scoring, and then they go through, um, we go to an actual meeting where we're discussing the top designs, um, and they choose from there. And I wanted to tell you about an event that we're having this summer. This is new for Street Spark. Um, it's June 11th and 12th, and it is called Street Spark Electricity. And it is going to be a two-day event where all of the utility boxes are going to be painted at the same time. So the public can walk around, see the, the artists working. Um, there's a total of 12 utility boxes. And then we also have a retaining wall that's going to be painted um, next to the Hamilton Power Plant. So, and that is about, I think, 429 feet long. So that is, that's a large one. Um, and when... Um, the event is going on, the community can come out and paint at that retaining wall site. So all ages are welcome. Uh, we're going to have DJs, we're going to have maybe food trucks. And um, so walking up and down High and Main Street and checking out the retaining wall site. Okay. And so this is the retaining wall, um, very long wall. It's about, about four feet tall. Um, and it is also next to a parking lot that is for Spooky Nook uh, coming soon. and. So there's going to be quite a bit of foot traffic there and having something you know, a little nicer to look at there is, is gonna be nice. Four artists are going to paint this mural and again, community members can come out and paint with them. And this is the design that was selected. Um, this is, uh, I'll read you the description. The, this design concept was inspired by the industrial architectural elements surrounding the retaining wall site, particularly the tubes and pipes of the nearby Hamilton power plant. The design pictures a series of bright crisscrossing pipes with flowers growing out of them, symbolizing the beauty that can blossom in even unexpected places. Natural beauty often finds a way to flourish in the spaces we least expect it, whether that be a crack in the sidewalk, a busy highway, medium, or the grounds of a power plant. And so um, you can see she's used lots of repeating elements. You're seeing it stacked. Obviously, it's going to go all the way across. But in order to submit designs, they, they did it this way just so we could see it. Um, so this is what's going to be there. And that's what community members can come and paint. OK, and then for the utility boxes, um, this one is located at the corner of High and Third. And this is actually uh, done by a Baden High School teacher and her students, some of her former students actually, are gonna be helping her paint this. And I won't read the description, I'll just give you guys the highlights as we go, but feel free to ask any questions about these. Um, this one is at the corner of Park and D, and there's a park um, right near this location. Um, and so it's, it's titled Kids to reflect, hopefully, kids seeing themselves in this design. Um, this design is still in process, but this is going to be at high and second, and we'll make sure you see that very soon. Um, and these colors are a little bit different, I will say, on this monitor. Um, they're a little more sort of pale, not quite so um, as bright as what you're seeing. Maybe it's, yeah. That looks like a little more accurate. Um, this is the corner of High and Front Street, so it's right next to um, the Presbyterian Church and across the street from Hamilton Mill. And it actually, the, the thin side panels are um, based off of the metalwork that you see on some of the doors on the um, Hamilton Mill. And this one is going to be located right near the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. And she was really inspired by um, the designs in the stained glass windows. And this is actually a high school student, a Hamilton High School student. And it was one of the strongest designs. It was really impressive. Um, and so she kind of used that. And uh, I believe the stained glass windows speak to uh, women's role during the war. So she went with that as well. 
This one is going to be located at Main and C. And um, if you've been by there, there's another mural that's sort of on the other side of this box that has some of the, the turquoise tones in it. It's got the um, origami birds and um, real intricate background. And so we thought this would work nicely. And this one is at the corner of Main and D. Uh, right near True West, kind of reflects the colors in the windows of True West, kind of has uh, ice cream colors, I think, to go with the Village Parlor. And here we have one at Main and F, um, some abstractions of butterfly wings, drawing attention to our pollinators that are so important. And this is at the corner of Court and Front Street, so right in view of the post office, and this artist was um, obviously inspired by that building and kind of went with a stamp theme and then there are different icons in Hamilton that you can see throughout there. Um, this one is uh, in Rotary Park and so you can even see the other Street Spark mural kind of behind it with the, the hand releasing the bird. Um, and the, the plants that are around that box grow up pretty tall so I think this will look nice kind of blending into that garden area. And this one is um, Market and Monument, so right near um, Municipal Brew Works, right by the bridge. And this was a really popular site. We got the most submissions for this site, I think, because it's a little bit of a larger box. Um, but kind of, you know, playful homage to uh, the German village roots and um, <coughs> Municipal Brew Works. Um, this one's a lot of fun. And this one is actually going to was designed by a uh, Hamilton High School teacher and is going to be painted with his current students. And they have a mural class that they've just started in the last couple years there, so they get to participate with this one. And then finally, this is at the corner of Eaton and Main, so right in front of Fire Station 24 um, and nearby the um, Embrace sculpture. And that's all I have. I just want to say thank you very, very much to the City of Hamilton and Hamilton Community Foundation for your support. Um, thank you to Susan. She was on our committee this year. Um, we've had lots of you guys on our committee throughout the years, and we appreciate it. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. And tremendous talent, uh, tremendous artistic expression. I sent myself an email, so I wouldn't forget June 11th. Yes, June 11th 12th. and 12th, yep. 11 to 5, is that Got right? it. Mm -hmm. Wow. And Jen, please remind us how many how many murals? There are twelve utility boxes and then one retaining wall, so we've Eight. got thirteen this Great. year. Thank you. Yeah. It was a tough decision. I mean, amazing artwork. So hopefully yes. we find a place for many others. Too. Right. I, I hope so too. Yeah, it was great. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Okay, that takes care of uh, special presentations. We go to audience of citizens, individuals who wish to make comments, uh, may speak during this part of the agenda, or may reserve the right to speak just prior to the uh, agenda item being voted upon. Uh, all individuals who intend to speak are required to sign this public speaking book. And in fact, we have two names. Each speaker is allowed up to five minutes. And we have first Dan Hancock. My name's Dan Hancock. I live at 67 Herman Avenue in Hamilton, Ohio. Uh, we got uh, down in Linden Wall there where we have the uh, street crossing down there. It's a paved brick in that across the street. Well, the brick is caving in in that, and you got like a big uh, potholes in that. So you need to uh, go in and pull the brick out, lay new sand in, and put the brick back down and make it look nice again. Because like I said, when your car hits it in that, you know you hit it. And there's a, uh, quite a few of them down through there. And then on, on uh, Cleveland Avenue, from Serial to Gray Street there on Cleveland, the roads deteriorated there and it's from side to side, not just down the middle of the street, but the whole street itself there through that area is just one big uh, tore up street that needs to be repaved in that. 
and it's getting worse uh, as, as time's going along here and that because all the traffic going down through there for the detour and that. So, uh, but I'm sure there's other areas in the city that are that, are that way too, but that one's pretty bad through there. Yeah, you so, said gray in Cleveland, is that correct? Yeah, Cleveland there between cereal and gray there. Okay, and then yeah, because people have to turn there on uh, off of Cleveland on to Gray to go down to get to B Street and that. So I said it's uh, pretty uh, bad through there. And then I'm writing, writing this down. Then the brick crosswalks and the crosswalks and the down there. Yeah, doesn't have to. Yeah, like I said, they need to be pulled up and and uh, relayed and that and make it look nice like it was when they first put it in and that and and uh, fix the uh, fix the pothole then. So. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Sure, all of us were writing that down in here who were <clears throat> great. Thanks, Dan. Second and last person who we have is a Grace Carr. Yes. Um, can I wait until after the annual action plan presentation? I have some questions that maybe answer them. Sure. Okay. I'm just going to write you down. Um, so you want to speak during the actual public hearing? After the presentation, I, I may after not be too if okay. questions are answered in that presentation. Okay. Actually, Jim, we're, we're going to keep moving on because we've got, I think, a rather lengthy executive session tonight. Is that correct, Mr. City Manager? It is, yes. So, but we just have to keep moving on. Now, you know Rich over here. I'd say after the meeting, I would talk to Rich and give him your list of items. I think that's probably the best way to, to work that, if that's okay with you. And it's okay with Rich, I hope. I, I can also call Mr. Lonneman tomorrow. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a call tomorrow and we'll catch up. I do. Here you go. Okay. All right, that takes care of audience of citizens. Uh, we now go to the consent agenda. And that includes matters such as um, staff reports, uh, caucus reports, informational report to February 2022, financial report, and also the February 2022 investment report. We're going to go into the committee of the whole, which allows council to hear some presentations um, on matters that are before uh, us in the caucus agenda. And I believe that we have four, is that correct, four presentations? You want to lead us into those, Mr. City Clerk? Uh, before we do that, can we get a motion that the meeting be recessed and the committee... I'm sorry, my bad. Place? The motion that the regular meeting be recessed, the committee will take place. So moved. Second. Motion made by Council Member Pullman, second by Vice Mayor Ryan. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Hearing none. That is 631. Um, you, you wanted to say something, is that during the public hearing? Yes, sir. Uh, during the public hearing. We'll get to the public hearings here in just a little bit. Um, for the audience of citizens, I'm trying to miss the time. I thought I had signed in, but um, apparently I signed in Yes, is, this, is that a matter that could be maybe best addressed by talking to someone after the meeting with uh, Chamber of Commerce Director? Would that be okay if we do it that way? Is it, is it, is it involving an item that's before council tonight? Um, I believe I believe it's um, a matter for the city to hear and um, listen to and to be able to comment on what I'm trying to present to the city and then to um, Hamilton and Butler County. Um, I would say that it'd be great if you would use the people in this off the audience as a resource and speak to them after the meeting if it's okay, because the actual meeting won't take too awful long. It's the executive session after the meeting, which is going to take some time. So with whom do you think you, think you need to speak to? Basically, I'm just trying to speak to the general council within itself of the um, city council board as best possible. Okay. Uh, is there something, um, Mr. Bates, that you could assist him with this evening while you are here and maybe... A, Connect him to somebody here in the audience who could be a resource for him before he comes to council next time and speaks. Is there a possibility of that? I mean, we, we do have to keep moving on this meeting. If I probably already have talked more than I probably can we connect? Can that take place tonight? That maybe you can connect him to some people tonight, Mr. Bates? Um, it's possible. Okay, let's try it that way first, and then come to the meeting with maybe some additional information, some additional ideas. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Let's try. I, I, I have ideas and information. I'm just trying to bring it sure. to the council. You can, Daniel, we'll make sure he has all of our cards. Yeah. Maybe the city manager will talk to you here for a few minutes before we 
There you go, brother. You're being connected right now, okay? And then come to counsel to the audience to, to listen to the very next one. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now we do the committee of the whole. We've got the four items on the caucus agenda. Do you want to start them, please, Mr. City Clerk? Sure. The first item is uh, for, agenda, for agenda item number one. This is a presentation by our Director of Residence Services, Mr. Adam Helms, related to an amendment to a contract with Rumpke of Ohio Incorporated. Good evening, Mayor Moeller, members of council. I'm here to talk to you about uh, the Rumpke contract. Currently, um, when a garbage cart breaks, uh, needs to be replaced, uh, Rumpke will go out and replace it and then bills the city $60 to replace that cart. Um, the cost of the garbage carts went up $10, so uh, they're going up to $70. In the Rumpke contract that is adopted by ordinance, it says the cost of the cart is $60. Um, this is why we have to come back and ask you for a contract amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, I should note that if a lid falls off or if a wheel breaks, Rumpke goes out and repairs that for free at no cost. Uh, the cost going up $10 will probably result in a $2,500 per year impact to the refuse fund over the remaining three years of the contract. You're looking at $7,500 to $10,000. Um, the refuse fund will absorb these costs. We're not going to pass them on to uh, the residential refuse customers. Uh, we'll probably do that uh, at the end of, at the next contract. We'll bake it into the next uh, refuse rate structure. Um, if we did it right now, the cost uh, increase per month per customer would be a penny. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and absorb that cost. But we need to bring this legislation to council. Um, because it's a change in the dollar amount that's spelled out in the contract. I think it's also worth noting that while we're not obligated to do this, um, <laughs> Rumpke has not asked, asked us for a fuel amendment, uh, an amendment for fuel prices to the contract. So basically we're operating on 2019-2020 fuel prices, which is, which is a big, uh, big savings currently. Um, and they've also done some other things to help us out, like the, uh, the free transfer station vouchers, uh, the one drop off per year at the, at the transfer station for our residents uh, that wasn't necessarily built into the contract. So we're just trying to do our part to uh, reimburse Rumpke and really for, it, it's, a good, it's a good value uh, just to have Rumpke inventory the carts, go out, deliver them, repair them. Hey, just so council knows, because I don't remember, when is the, uh, this particular contract up? Uh, end of 2024. We have three, three years left, or two and a half. Any questions for uh, Mr. Helms? Mm. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Next caucus agenda item. Uh, next, we'll have a presentation for agenda item number two by our director of law, Ms. Letitia Block. Hello, Mayor Moeller, members of City Council, and citizens of Hamilton. Um, I'm before you to just present a small language change uh, in our codified ordinance pertaining to our ordinance review commission. Um, our ordinance our review commission has representatives uh, from city staff on the commission, uh, and at times those members are not able to attend the meetings. And so it came up at a meeting uh, last year that they would like to be able to appoint an alternate uh, and to specifically be able to add language um, in our codified ordinances to make it clear that they can do that. Uh, and so we did a small language change. If you wanna go ahead and flip to the um, last sure. slide. Um, and this just shows basically uh, the small change that we're adding to basically make it clear um, that an alternate can be um, available when that's necessary. So we'll still have um, designees from particular departments, uh, but if they need to be absent, make it clear that they will have an alternate. Any questions about that? Questions, <coughs> questions or comments? Yeah, I just wanted to comment that this really will be very helpful to ordinance review. So then we have a, a, a full staff or consensus when we're here. Um, a lot of times people are gone and can't make it. And so this is just one way to make sure that everybody knows what's going on and we can get all the information out properly. 
And I will, will note that we did already send this change to the Ordinance Review Commission and they have approved that. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next up, we'll have a presentation by me. <laughs> Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of City Council, members of the public. I'll be doing a brief and uh, very exciting presentation about liquor permits. Agenda item number three is a recommendation relative to a new liquor permit application that the city has received by the state of Ohio. Uh, so just in briefly going over this, this is a new liquor permit application and this is a process that is uh, the city's not as involved as much as the state is, so it's a completely it's a different review process. Uh, so, when a new when a property owner or a business owner applies for a liquor permit with the Department of Commerce, the Division of Liquor Control, uh, the Ohio Revised Code allows legislative authorities such as a city council the opportunity to object. So this is with various departments such as the Building Department, Health Department, Police, and Fire. Uh, and so uh, our city staff has had the opportunity to review this liquor permit and there are no objections. Uh, additionally, their recommendation for tonight is that there is no objection uh, from the city council. I would like to be clear though that this is just for the liquor permit itself. This does not mean that the business can start, excuse me, can start selling uh, liquor tomorrow. They still have to go through the full permit process with all uh, applicable city departments. Uh, the address in question is 221 South B Street. That's the sidecar bar. I'm sure uh, council and the city administration is familiar with this application and their permit, their permit process. Uh, do we have any questions from council? Questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, then the last presentation for agenda item number four will be uh, Dan Arthur of the Public Works Department. Hi, good evening, Mayor Moeller and uh, members of council. Mine's not going to be as exciting as the uh, liquor permit one, but I have uh, some, some ordinance changes that we're recommending in uh, future council meetings to uh, clean up some legislation um, where we've had some problems with some right-of-way violations. Um, particularly, this was brought to our attention on the issue we had out on Golf View. And so we had several departments that worked together to come up with the right way to clean this up. Um, the law department looked at it. We took this to the, uh, the uh, <coughs> Ordinance Review Commission for approval, and as well, we took it to the uh, Public Utility Commission. The two uh, chapters that we're wanting to clean up are the uh, chapter uh, 915.05, the responsibilities for maintenance of plantings in the overhanging public right away, and uh, chapter 901.03, obstructions. Um, next slide, please. Gotcha. So the purpose of the, the recommendation is Public Works um, issued a little over a thousand right-of-way violations and notices in the last four years. It takes a substantial amount of our staff time to do that. Most of the, uh, the local residents, they've been compliant with it. So we'll issue the letters and they'll take care of the issues that's on the property. What we're trying to capture here are um, property owners that don't live in the city and property owners that own multiple properties but they're from out of state. Um, so we were cleaning up some of these, but the prices were so low, we were kind of becoming sort of their landscapers and doing these. They would either, some of them would pay them, um, but some of them wouldn't pay them at all. And we needed a mechanism to make it, make it have a little more teeth in the ordinance to where it's, you know, the, we were getting recouped in some of the money that we were losing from that, as well as the timing that it takes for staff to put out these letters and work on these things. So they're, the way it was written up now, um, we had to go through a process of reissuing the letters over and over again. The way we've cleaned that up, this will allow us to um, to just go through the process. If it's a repeat violator, they they would only have to we could re, um, give them a violation letter more frequently. The uh, um, the mechanism for for fixing these violations was also cleaned up. So we kind of talked through. Um, what needed to be fixed, what was a, uh, a yeah, I'm losing my train of thought. Let's go to the next slide, please. You got it. So it kind of define what, define what a reasonable cost is for a right-of-way violation, and that being the um, manpower that went into this, the staffing, the equipment, and what was a reasonable cost. We cleaned that up a little bit. 
Um, another item that needed it was administrative fees. As I mentioned, staff's having to go out on these quite frequently, so we added an additional $200 uh, cost associated with those administrative fees included in this. We compared that to other municipalities and how they handled things, looked at the pricing that they used, looked at their legislation, legislation law handled that for us and looked through that and gave us some recommendations in that regard. But this will allow us to also use contractors. So some of these violations are larger than we can handle. We can use a local contractor for this and apply our administrative fees to that as well. Um, it also defined the timeline, like I had mentioned, so that we can speed up the process and not have to go out and revisit the same violators over and over again. If it's once the same property owner and the same violation, um, and it's after 14 days or before two years, we can just send them a violation notice. So it really, it really helped the process. The other thing that we added in was a $50 processing fee. There's additional fees associated if this has to go to the uh, county for a special assessment, and we can do that for the uh, vegetation le legislation. Um, that we can't do that on the uh, the obstruction because the obstruction might not be on your it might be on your property, but you not might not have been the one to put that there. The uh, marked up red lines have been included in this um, in the packet for you to review, and we'll be bringing that legislation in future meetings. Is there any questions on that? Questions or comments, Mr. Mayor? Please. Um, Dan, are alleys public? Right of ways, are they considered a public right of way? Yes. Okay, I've wondered because I, I mean some of them have some of them have been vacated, and, yeah. and to the to the adjacent property owners, but some of them are public right of way. Right, because some of them are pretty highly traveled. They're one way, but I notice sometimes they really get overgrown in the back there along the alley, and I think maybe people don't think about that as a place to do maintenance, but it's difficult to see in some of the alleyways. So okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Mayor, oh, again, you were right. It wasn't quite as riveting as the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> but, but thanks for sharing. And as you said, there were a lot of red lines in our packets that we were able mm -hmm. to review. So thank you for sharing. Absolutely. Mr. Mayor, yes. you said a lot of this was brought by Golfview. Uh, yes. From Golfview, and that was the, the problem with the houses across the street from the one neighbors. Mm -hmm. And did that now in that instance there, first of all, did that's pretty much cleaned up now, or so we've the problem fixed. Uh, the problem I've been kind of involved in that one, so right. Okay. The problem hasn't been completely fixed. We we have put together the cost estimate, and we've billed them a couple of times, and we're trying to figure out like we've assessed them for it as well. So we're going through that process. They haven't paid us yet, but the work has been completed, and we're and we've tried to dress that up as best because we can. That's an investment company across the street from the neighbors that's renting the houses and. They're from out of town, right? Correct. Yeah, but they're from like South Carolina, and they own like six properties. Oh, sorry, they own like six of those properties there in that area. Okay, and they're cooperating right now, or they're so far they're not cooperating right now. We've we went through the process, and, and again because because of the changes, we'll be able to do that faster. But well, we went through the process where we give them the notification letters, and then we can follow up in the, in the time frame uh, per the ordinance on when we can give them the violations. Then we get the violations. Then if they don't do the violations, then we do the cleanup, and then we can bill them for that. Then if they don't pay the, the billing of that, we can assess it. Okay, and I appreciate you doing that Peggy Bangy jumping in there. She did a great job on that and uh, talking with the neighbors and because I was pretty much involved with initial contact on that, so I appreciate you all doing that. Driven sure. by it a few times, so it yeah. is a little bit of a mess. Yes, That's Peggy's good. been very helpful with that. Yeah, great. Okay, thank you. Yep, thank you. Okay, that takes care of all four of the committee of the whole presentations. Okay, I'll accept the motion. The committee of the whole be closed. So moved. Second. Second. Motion made by Council Member <clears throat> Nab, seconded by Vice Mayor Ryan. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried. And it is 647. I'll accept the motion that the regular meeting be reconvened. So moved. Second. Motion made by Council Member Fear. Second by Council Member Vaughn. Roll call vote to go back into the regular meeting. Moeller. Yes. Pullman. Yes. Fear. Yes. Vaughn. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Nab. Yes. Lauer. Yes. Motion adopted 7 0. Okay, it is 6 48. We go back into the regular meeting. Um, I'll send the motion that, with the exception of the items so noted, the Council receive the reports, the consent agenda, and concurrent recommendations. So, so moved. Second. Motion made by Council Member Vaughn, second by Council Member Fear. 
All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried. We now go to the public hearing. I'll set the motion at the regular meeting be recessed and the following public hearings take place. So moved. Second. Motion by Council Member Pullman. Seconded by Council Member uh, Nab. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried. Okay, I'm going to read the public hearing into the record, please. A public hearing regarding a recommendation on submission of the draft fiscal year 2022 through 2026 consolidated plan and fiscal year 2022 through 2023 annual action update for Hamilton, Ohio to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. And we do have a presentation from Ms. Tamika Hedrington of our Neighborhood Development Division. She is going to be presenting virtually and I'll be getting her uh, situated for this presentation in just a moment. Thank you. Okay, Tamika, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Give me one moment to share my screen. which is of course not gonna work right now. Daniel, do you have my presentation? I should, I'll, I'll pull it up. Okay, cause it's not allowing me to share my screen. Okay, I'll pull it up. Daniel, Thank you. It's uh, two nine, it's on, starts on 219. Mm -hmm. If you're on the packet. <clears throat> I'm not. Okay, Tamika, can you see that? I can, that's perfect, thank you. All right. Ready when you are. Ready, next screen, please. Okay. Good evening, everyone, as stated, as Daniel described, my name is Tamika Hedrington, and I'm here with Dorana Smith, who's also here with us virtually this evening. Next screen, please. We are here presenting the city's consolidated plan for fiscal year 2022 through 2026 annual and, and the annual action plan for fiscal year 2022 through 2023. Both plans describe the local needs, resources, priorities, and proposed activities be, to be undertaken with respect to the federally, federally funded HUD programs, the Community Development Block Grant, which is CDBG, and HOME. Both plans are a requirement for the city to continue to receive federal fundings. The consolidated plan and the annual action plan include citizen input. The citizen input that we acquired this year was done by way of email as well as mail surveys, a tabulation of those surveys, and also three public virtual, um, three virtual public input meetings. All input received, whether by survey or during the public input meetings, is included in the draft plans. We also included this year information received during our analysis of impediments and which we submitted to HUD earlier this year. So we were able to include that information in our consol consolidated planning process. It is anticipated that later this spring, we'll be able to submit the consolidated plan as well as the annual action plan to HUD. Next slide, please. The public input process included, as stated previously, both web surveys mail sur and mail surveys. We received approx approximately 27 completed surveys at a 4.7 response rate. We've noticed over the last couple of years, especially since COVID, that our response rate has decreased. And our way of addressing that has been when Dorana and I do things like our monitoring visits, and then also have impromptu meetings and conversations with whether it's citizens of the community or also our subrecipients. We take those times, those opportunities to take in and gather feedback to see how are things going? Are there things 
particularly in the community that they're seeing needs that are just not being identified or not being addressed. So this way we were able to include this information in addition to what we actually received in the surveys. We also had our three public input meetings in August of last year. Next slide, please. Get my money's worth. The categories for eligible activities under CDBG funding include the purchase of property for developmental projects, public facilities and improvements, and that can include things like reconstruction and rehab of facilities, Park, parks and recreation facilities, street improvements, things of that nature. Demolition and clearance of dilapidated unsafe buildings, public services, which you can see can be wide ranging. Emergency home, minor home repairs for income qualifying households, economic development in the commercial revol revolving loan funding, as well as planning design and program administration costs. But there is a cap at 20%. Next slide, please. Here you'll find a copy of the survey. We kept it consistent. So the same survey you see here was what people received in the mail, but then were also able to access electronically. Next slide, please. Through the tabulation of survey results, we were able to identify some of the top needs in public services and public facilities. We found that in public services, the three top needs included drugs and substance abuse services, mental health services, and services for battered and abused spouses and children. In regards to public facilities, we were able to identify that street repaving and repair, homeless facilities, and youth centers are all, were all significant needs that were identified. Next slide, please. It is anticipated that in fiscal year 2022 through 2023, that the city will receive approximately $1,440,275 in home funds, in CDBG funds, sorry, and $386,885 in home funds. Next slide, please. The total for CDBG and home will be approximately $1,827,160. Next slide, please. Each year, we also, in addition to including our estimated entitlement funds of CDBG and home, we also are able to and need to estimate our housing revolving loan funds and economic development revolving loan funds. You'll see the estimate for economic development here. We've not tabulated our housing revolving loan fund because we like to try to tabulate that the closer we get to the end of our fiscal year, which will be April 30th. Next slide, please. Here you begin to see the actual proposed funding for fiscal year 2022 through 2023. You'll be able to see that some of the things that were identified through our survey res responses that we are able to actually propose for funding for this year. For example, the Bros and Boys and Girls Club has asked for uh, funding for their fencing around their Grand Boulevard location. Next slide, please. And BTW has asked for funding for their um, BTW programming, which will be which is for youth as well as seniors. So that'll address the youth needs that were identified in the survey. Um, we also anticipate providing support to providing funding for supportive services to the homeless through Serve City, and then also addressing um, the victim abuse and battered women in that community and through the victims advocacy program. We have other proposed funding sources that you'll see along here. Next slide, please. This slide identifies the home programming. One of the bigger projects that we anticipate proposing for fiscal year 2022 through 2023 includes the new construction from home ownership. That'll be done by our local CHOTA, which is neighbor, Neighborhood Housing Services. Last slide, please. If approved, the finance department recommends that city council approve the draft consolidated plan and annual action plan for submission to HUD later this spring. At this time, I welcome any and all questions. Any questions from council? Otherwise, we'll go to Grace Carter. You wish to, okay, you mentioned your, you wanted to speak. I wrote your name down in the book, Thank but this is a public hearing. Give us your uh, name, address, contact yes. information. Um, my name is Grace Carr. I'm at 33 Petty Drive here in Hamilton. And I apologize, I have just one or two questions. And I was hoping 
Um, I was here last week when the presentation was originally scheduled and Dave Hood was here. I was hoping he would be here again. Um, so I apologize for asking some questions that maybe could have been answered previously, but um, did Surf City ask, I see they're getting um, 20,000 for supportive services. Did they request any more than that? Um, I'm looking at an article from November in the Journal News. Um, it's saying, let's see, they, I know some of their, the money they're requesting is coming from the county and ARPA funds. But there is a quote that says Hamilton City Manager Joshua Smith has told City Council the city was working with the county commissioners and the city could potentially provide funding for homeless issues if it doesn't come from the county. So I didn't know how that fit in with this annual action plan. From the prior screen, I think it had a requested amount and proposed amount. Is that the surf city up on that particular screen which had those columns? Maybe the one before that. It is requested yeah. versus proposed. Requested. Thank you. I had um, 32 look. five requested 20,000 is what looks to be given or proposed to be given. Okay. Okay. Let me write that down. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just, my public comment was um, because I had, I spoke to Tamika on the phone and we're emailing. So um, I got the document was very long. I tried to review and it was 174 pages. So I did not get the opportunity to completely review it. Tamika was able to pull out for me just this um, proposed budget so it was easier to review. So my question was, and I know with public services that parks and recreational facilities do come under that. Um, I just, the Fitton Center for the Creative Arts, I'm currently a student at Miami and doing grant writing with some arts organizations in Middletown. I know there there is a lot of funding for the arts and I just wondered prioritization wise if that was, you know, over homeless issues. Um, the best use of these particular funds um, and just wondering, you know, Serve City has asked for more than they've been given. So that was a concern of mine. But Ms. Amanda, did you want to comment or could you comment based just upon your comments to the paper? And sure. Uh, based on the, um, the quote from, I believe, uh, 2021, mm -hmm. um, what's in front of council tonight is the entitlement funds from the federal government uh, with respect to CDBG and, and home. Um, my comments were in reference to the ARPA funding, and we okay. can we continue to have uh, ongoing conversations with Butler County on the best way to handle uh, some of the uh, homeless initiatives. Right. And uh, certainly nothing has been voted on at the county level yet, but by all indications, they are working towards a a plan countywide that would address, right. I think, some of the things that you mentioned. Okay. And I have been meaning to get to a commissioner's meeting. Um, I've you know, known Cindy Carpenter and would like to follow up with her, but would it be possible to get follow up regarding like how the city and county work together on that? Just, you know, looking at that journal news article, it kind of piqued my interest, like how that partnership works and depending on what does or does not get approved from the county, what the city can or cannot do. Would it be possible to get like follow ups? I don't want to take up too much time at this meeting, but like a contact within the city versus the county that I could ask those questions in the future. Yeah, I, I would be happy to follow up. I know that uh, our director of public safety, Scott Scramese, was in a meeting mm -hmm. with Commissioner Dixon um, and some, I think the mayor, I think actually our mayor was there and the mayor of Middletown was there and the Middletown city manager was there. Okay. Uh, where the, that was probably what, three, four weeks ago? Yes. Yeah, so okay. those, those conversations continue, but uh, I, I'd be happy to uh, give you a periodic update on how okay. that's going. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Is your um, email probably on the City of Hamilton page? It is. Um, okay. But Aaron will walk out and make sure you have all my contact information wonderful. when you're done. Thank you so much. We hope there is a partnership. Thank you. Me too. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Anyone else in the audience wish to be heard at this um, public hearing involving the uh, CDBG funds and the home funds? Anyone else in the audience? Anyone on? Nobody else signed the book. Anyone on council wish to make a comment at this time or make a motion? Mr. Mayor. Council Member Nab. I move the public hearing be closed. Second. Council Member Nab. Mm -hmm. Council Member Pullman. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <clears throat> Carrying none. That motion is carried. That public hearing is over with at 7.03. <laughs> please read the next public hearing into the record. <clears throat> A public hearing regarding amending the City of Hamilton Zoning Ordinance number 7503 by changing the zoning of 3570 Pleasant Avenue, parcels P646201200168 
and P64620120069 and 3590 Pleasant Avenue, parcel number P64620120019. From R4 Multifamily Residence to OPD Office Plan Development District, situated in the 6th Ward, South Side, City of Hamilton. Okay, anyone in the any in audience wish to be heard at this public hearing? The City first. Anyone in the audience wish to be heard at this public hearing involving the uh, Pleasant Avenue addresses? Anyone on Council wish to be heard at this point in time or wish to make any kind of a motion? Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Pullman. Make a motion that the public hearing be closed. Second. Motion by Councilmember Pullman. Motion by Councilmember Fear. Uh, <coughs> Figure, please say aye. 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 On the same side. Hearing none, that motion is carried. Uh, and that public hearing is closed at 7.05. I'll accept the motion that the uh, regular meeting be reconvened. So moved. Second. Second. Motion made by Councilmember Vaughn, seconded by Vice Mayor Ryan. Roll call vote to reconvene the regular meeting. Moeller. Yes. Pullman. Yes. Fear. Yes. Vaughn. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Nab. Yes. Lauer. Yes. Motion adopted at 7 0. Regular meeting is reconvened at 7 05. We now go to um, council actions pertaining to legislative items pending legislation. Um, agenda item number seven. Secondary of an ordinance involving the job classification of employee <coughs> leave and workers' compensation administrator. Mr. Mayor, please. You need to make a motion first. Uh, I, I believe we're okay. We, we took care of that motion earlier. We took care of it. Yes, sir. All right. Yep. Missed it out. Okay. All right. We now go to that agenda item number seven, please. Number seven. An ordinance amending and supplementing Schedule A of the city's classification and compensation plan as set forth in emergency ordinance number EOR 2021 uh, 12, da, uh, 12 dash 12 adopted December 8th, 2021 from and as amended from tw time to time to establish the classification of employee leave and workers compensation administrator second reading. Mr. Mayor. Council member fear. I move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by council member fear. Second by council member Vaughn. Any discussion or comments on this one? Hearing none, roll call vote. Moeller. Yes. Pullman. Yes. Fear. Yes. Vaughn. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Nab. Yes. Lauer. Yes. Or it's adopted 7 0. Thank you. I want to go back real quick and say that no one signed the public hearing book involving the Pleasant Avenue rezoning. <clears throat> okay. We now go to agenda item number eight, second reading of an ordinance um, involving uh, changes of zoning, established zoning on North Third Street. An ordinance amending the City of Hamilton Zoning or Ordinance number, number 7503 by changing and establishing the zoning of and the corresponding zoning map for 990 North 3rd Street, P64310010004, 1000 North 3rd Street, P64310010005, and 1010 North 3rd Street, L four nine one zero zero two six zero 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 four and L four nine one zero zero two five zero 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 two seven save Hamilton applicant second reading. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Vaughn. Move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by Councilmember Vaughn, second by Vice Mayor Ryan. Um, any questions on this one or comments? Hearing none, roll call vote. Moeller? Yes. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Flower? Yes. Warrants adopted, 7 0. Thank you. We go to agenda item number nine, second reading emergency ordinance involving uh, Rossville Flats. An emergency ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to execute a second amendment to the development agreement, property conveyances, and related actions with Main Street Hamilton Apartments LLC for the Rossville Flats project, second reading. Mr. Mayor? Council Mayor. Uh, Nab. I move that the ordinance be adopted. Second. Second. Motion by Council Member Nab. Second by Council Member Pullman. Discussion, comments on this one? Okay. Roll call vote. Moeller? Yes. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Flower? Yes. Ordinance adopted, 7 0. Now I'll go to new legislation and agenda item number 10, first reading of an ordinance involving uh, community development block grant and home funds. 
An ordinance approving the City of Hamilton's consolidated plan for fiscal year ending 2022 through 2026 and annual action plan for fiscal year 2022 through 2023 delineation the statement of objectives and proposed use of Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, and Home Investment Partnership Program and authorizing the submittal of said plans to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, City of Hamilton applicant, first reading. Uh, just for the record, for those who are in the audience and those who are Washington TV Hamilton, the second reading on that will be the first meeting in April. Is that correct? That will be the vote then, correct? Okay. Go to agenda item number 11. First reading of an ordinance involving um, various codified ordinances in the city of Hamilton. An ordinance amending and supplementing the codified ordinances of the city of Hamilton, Ohio, by amending various portions of the existing Part 17 Health Code and establishing a new Part 19 Housing and Property Maintenance Code. First reading. We now go to agenda item number 12, which is the first reading of an ordinance involving the change of zoning at those Pleasant Avenue address parcels. An ordinance amending the City of Hamilton Zoning Ordinance, ordinance number 7503 by changing the zoning of 3570 Pleasant Avenue parcels P6462012000168 and P6462012000169 and 3590 Pleasant Avenue parcel number P6462012000197 from R4 Multifamily Residence to OPD Office Plan Development, situated in the 6th Ward, South Side, City of Hamilton, uh, City of Hamilton applicant. First reading. Uh, we now go to agenda item number 13, which is first reading of an ordinance involving uh, parades. In ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 315, parades of the codified ordinances of the City of Hamilton, City of Hamilton applicant. First reading. And we go to agenda item number 14, uh, first reading of an emergency ordinance involving a $250,000 grant to the Community Improvement Corporation. An emergency ordinance affirming the designation of the Community Improvement Corporation of Hamilton, Ohio, as the city's agency for development in the city and authorizing a grant in the amount not to exceed $250,000 to be made to the Community Improvement Corporation of Hamilton, Ohio, for public purposes and declaring an emergency. First reading. Thank you. Go to agenda item number 15, it's a resolution involving economic development agreement. A resolution authorizing revolving a revolving loan to Luke's Custom Cakes and Cupcakes LLC, Luke's, in the sum of, in the sum of no more than $20,000 for the expansion of Luke's 221 High Street location within the corporate limits of the City of Hamilton and authorizing and directing the execution of an economic development agreement with Luke's for said purposes. Mayor. Councilmember Fear. I move the resolution be adopted. Second. Motion made by Councilmember Fear, second by Councilmember Vaughn. Councilmember Vaughn, you've been there recently, I believe? Yes, it's beautiful in the back. Um, took some photos, uh, spoke with Luke, and he said, you know, it's, it's a dream for him back there to have all the space for them to bake. You can actually walk in off of Journal Square That's good. and look through the doors and watch them decorating cakes and cupcakes and it's beautiful thank you for the pictures yeah yeah, yeah. They, 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 they spoke a thousand words anyone else on council wish to make a comment about this before we do a vote okay we'll call a vote please moeller yes Pullman. yes fear yes vaughn yes ryan yes nab yes lauer yes resolution adopted seven zero go to agenda item number 16 resolution involving our uh, side lot program a resolution approving the conveyance of certain real property acquired through the land bank to an adjoining property owner as a side lot. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Nab. I move the resolution be adopted. Second. Motion by Council Member Nab. Second by Vice Mayor Ryan. Discussion or comments about this one? Uh, is that 1216 Campbell Avenue? Yes. <clears throat> All right. Um, any other comments or questions? Okay. Roll call vote, please. Moeller. Yes. Pullman? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Resolution adopted, 7-0. Audience City Manager? Uh, a few items, Mayor. One, just want to say hi to Anne Marie, who has joined us tonight. As many of you know, she is the owner of Casual Pint, uh, one of our many great small businesses on the newer side. I'm sure Anne Marie is looking forward to a spring and summer without COVID hopefully lingering over us. and. Uh, 
Yes. Um, I'm also going to petition her to change her um, trivia night from Wednesday night when we're at council meetings to a night that I actually can go to. But uh, all my friends always tell me how much fun it is on Wednesday nights as we're sitting in the council meetings. But um, also, uh, Chapter 147 of our codified ordinances allows for uh, the city to have a traffic commission. Uh, when I was uh, early in my tenure as city manager, that was something that we did use. Um, we're going to be restarting the traffic commission. Uh, Actually, I've already had a couple people reach out to me, uh, John Vaughn and Tommy Johnson, who wish to be uh, to serve on that. Uh, we have a couple folks in the crowd that come to a lot of our council meetings that have issues about traffic, so I'm going to talk to them and, and check their interest also. But um, my goal is to have that up and running uh, at some point in April, and I will make sure council is notified uh, of that. Uh, I want to say a quick congratulations to Fabian Schmall, John Kirsch, and Heather Lewis. Uh, they're being recognized tomorrow evening at the uh, Junior Achievement uh, Business Hall of Fame uh, dinner. Uh, we've had many Hamiltonians recognized um, in the past decade or so, but uh, they have three in, in one evening, a special. Uh, and the city of Hamilton has a table there for tomorrow evening. Uh, the 17 Strong annual meeting is this Saturday from 9 a.m. to noon. Uh, I'm sure several people in the room will be there, but just wanted to make sure that was uh, put out as a reminder. And that is all. Thank you. Owners of the City Council. I just want to say thank you to Marie as well for she had a really nice event, uh, St. Patrick's Day. In conjunction with uh, Municipal Brew Works, it was a lengthy 0.1 mile <coughs> Dora race. And um, thank her for working together with so many of the other folks in that, in that area. Hype has a job fair. April 7th, 2022, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. And that's at their location at 228 Court Street, second floor. And uh, it's interesting job fair, on the spot interviews. Uh, bring a resume if you have them. Tell Ohio will be there to open accounts. But the list of uh, companies looking to, to, to get some help, is Booking Nook, Community First Solutions, YMCA Central, YMCA Fitton, YMCA City of Hamilton, Greater Chamber of Commerce, Alexander's Deli, Tano's Bistro, Hyde's, Hamilton City Schools. For further information, contact Pastor Shack. We all know her, but the number she gave, 513-899-6181. Uh, That's April 7th, 4 to 7. Mr. Mayor. Please. I helped out with the green team cleanup uh, around downtown Hamilton on St. Patrick's Day, and it was so fun. My route took me around Markham Park and over by Casual Pint, and at 1230, things were hopping downtown Hamilton. So it was really fun to see that and all the activities. I mean, High Street was busy. I left, I drove out Main Street. And the hub, I don't know if anyone was working on Thursday, uh, the 17th, but <laughs> it was crowded over there. So it was really fun to see that. And it was a gorgeous day. So it was fun. Yeah. Thanks to all who were out there celebrating and the businesses who were all open. It was just great. Anyone else on council? Okay. Executive session, Mr. City Manager. Uh, yes, sir, for two items. The first is to consider confidential information related to the marketing plans and specific business strategy of an applicant for economic development assistance. And the second is to confer with an attorney for the public body concerning disputes involving the public body that are the subject of pending or imminent court action. Okay. Regarding the first request as it's related to economic development, I'll accept the motion that the executive session is found to be necessary to protect the interest of the applicant or the possible investment expenditure of public funds made in connection with an economic development project. So moved. Second. Motion, mm -hmm. motion member council member Pullman, second by council member Fear. Um, roll call vote on that motion, please. Moeller. Yes. Pullman. Yes. Fear. Yes. Vaughn. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Nab. Yes. Lauer. Yes. Motion adopted, 7-0. Okay, that was 7-17 on that motion. Is there a motion that we go into executive session for the stated purposes given by the city manager? So moved. Second. Motion by Council Member Fear. Second by Council Member Vaughn. Roll call vote on that motion, please. Moeller. Yes. Pullman. Yes. Fear. Yes. Vaughn. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Nab. Yes. Lauer. Yes. Motion adopted. 7-0. 7-18 on that. Okay, we're going to 
have our executive session upstairs or downstairs. Right here. Okay. We'll come out of that executive session only to adjourn the regular meeting. Thank you all for being here. <coughs> okay.